Hi folks, welcome to part two of our intro to cell biology. Um, and in this quick video, we're gonna talk about how all cells are the same, uh, but also some of the ways in which cells are different. In this the image that you're looking at, you have um, two white blood cells, which are in yellow. Um, and they are beginning to consume some bacteria. So a single, use green, a single bacterium is here. And these particular bacteria are organized into um, chains of rod-like cells. All right. So there are two major forms of cells on this planet. Now notice I'm, I'm trying to say forms rather than types because inside our bodies we have thousands of different cell types. Um, I'm talking planet-wide. There are two overarching or overarching, never sure which is the appropriate word, um, forms of cells, and those are referred to as eukaryotic and prokaryotic. So, strange words, I know. Let's deconstruct them. The prefix you means true in Greek. And the prefix pro means before. All right, so we have true and before. Carry on means nut or kernel. So we have cells that are described by the first folks that saw them and named them as looking like a true nut when they look through the microscope and some that look like um, they came before the nut or they did not have a nut. You'll see why eventually. All right, so we've got prokaryotes and eukaryotes. If we were together in class, I would ask you guys to, um, with your neighbors, talk about these two cartoons of two different cell types and talk to me about the differences you observe, right? And to do this kind of thing, you do not need to know anything about cells, you just use your eyes, right? So the first thing that would smack me in the face is size. Some cells, one of the cell types, the cells are much smaller than the, than the other. And in fact, the prokaryotes are always much, much smaller than the eukes are. Now, if you look at these images, you might actually get a sense about why it's possible for eukaryotes to be so much larger. Because in your head, hopefully you're thinking, well, wait a minute, I just listened to the other lecture and you said cells have to stay small so they have a good surface area to volume ratio and that eukaryotic cell looks at least 10 times larger. And you were thinking that's a good perception because it would be a problem. But eukaryotic cells have adaptations that allow them to increase surface area even as they get larger. And that's related to the second thing you probably notice, which is that there's a big difference in complexity of these cells. The prokaryotic cell is not just smaller, but it's much, much simpler. It doesn't have all the additional stuff inside it. Um, a lot of those additional things are the organelles An organelle literally means tiny organ or little organ. 
So what allows for the complexity is that eukaryotes, at some point in our history, there was a genetic mutation that allowed for cell membrane, which is phospholipid, to be kept within the cell. So we call these things membrane-bound organelles. And by having a membrane-bound organelle, you get a, a lot of uh, different things. You can increase the amount of cell membrane um, that's in contact with the outside world, which is what we're seeing here. You can also, and this is really important, you can create separate, think of them as rooms inside the cells. Think, you know, in a house, right, um, or an apartment, we use different rooms for different functions. The same thing is true in eukaryotic cells. Prokaryotic cells, it's like um, a wide open studio apartment where the bathroom, the kitchen, the bedroom, the hangout space is all completely open. So size is different, the complexity is different, and that has to do with membrane-bound organelles. The mother of all membrane organelles is called the nucleus. All right, so the third way in which cells, prokaryotes and eukaryotes, differ from one another is in our evolutionary history. Okay, so what we're looking at here is um, a map of the tree of life with only existing species. So we're sort of looking at the tree of life as though we were in a helicopter far above it. So all we can see are the tips of the branches. When we say all life is related by common descent, it means that all cells have a common ancestor, which we refer to as LUCA, um, which stands for last universal common ancestor. Now there are three broad branches off, the, off of the trunk of life, which for lack of a better word, we call LUCA. And those are the eubacteria, which are shown in the light blue, the archaea, which are shown in green, and then eukarya, which is shown here. So I said that we have differing evolutionary histories, prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Prokaryotes are the eubacteria and the archaea, right? And eukaryotes fall within one of the three domains of life called eukarya, right? So this again goes back to the idea that <clears throat> we have differing evolutionary histories. You should know the three domains of life, true bacteria or eubacteria, the archaea, and then eukarya. And you should also know that within eukarya, there are four kingdoms. Fungi, animals, which we are, plants, and then Another form of complex cell life called protists. So the fourth way in which living prokaryotes and eukaryotes differ from one another is whether they're unicellular versus multicellular. The prokaryotes are always unicellular. 
Now, sometimes you'll be able to see as in that the very first image I in this lecture that um, as something like a bacteria divides, um, especially because they divide really rapidly, they may st stay stuck together um, at one end, but they're not considered multicellular. Eukaryotes can be either unicellular, which is what protists are. So those are things like amoebas. Uh, fungi can be multicellular, like a mushroom, um, or single-celled, like um, yeast. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, animals and plants. Um, well, animals are always multicellular, and plants tend to be multicellular as well. All right, so that, those are the four ways that prokaryotes and eukaryotes are different. Next thing we want to think about is what features all cells on this planet, prokaryote and eukaryote, share. And the way that I think about this is these are the, the four structures that you need for a basic toolkit of life. One thing you have to have is a boundary between the chemistry inside the cell and the chemistry surrounding the cell. And that's found in the structure of the plasma membrane, which both prokaryotes and eukaryotes have. The next thing that you need in your basic toolkit is a source of information. And that's provided by DNA, which is deoxyribonucleic acid, as you learned in the biochem section. And it is the source of the ultimate source of information for how to build proteins. And our friends, the proteins do damn near everything in the cell. Third thing that you need in your toolkit is a site for metabolism to occur. And as you learned when we talked about hydrolysis and dehydration synthesis, water is absolutely critical. So that's where the cytoplasm comes in. It's primarily made of water and it's present in prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Last but not least, you need the machines that can take the genetic code and use it to build proteins. And those are the ribosomes, which we'll talk more about in a future video. They're too small to be visible in this, uh, in this image. By the way, what we're looking at here are electron micrographs of um, a large eukaryotic cell and the much smaller prokaryotic cell. All right, so we talked about four differences, size, complexity, and that has to do with membrane-bound organelles, difference in evolutionary history, and a difference in whether that form of cell is always unicellular or can be, which is true for prokaryotes, or can be unicellular or multicellular, which is the case for eukaryotes. The four similarities have to do with structures that are absolutely critical for life. You need a cell or plasma membrane to isolate the chemistry inside the cell from the chemistry surrounding the cell. So you have plasma membrane. You need a source of information that comes in the form of DNA, which is organized into chromatin or chromosomes. You need a place for metabolism to occur. That's the cytoplasm. And you need the machines to build proteins from the genetic code, and those are ribosomes. 
in the next three videos, we're going to dive into complex eukaryotic cell structure.